completely dark here in downtown Calistoga and the wind for the past few hours has been gusty, not consistent though. You can take a look at those flags kind of calm, not too bad, but the gusts are coming and going and then let's go ahead and take a look at this intersection completely dark, but I did just speak to some public workers who are out here and they said they were driving over to check the city's generators to make sure that the sewage system was still pumping. So it may look dark and quiet, but there's still a lot of work to be done. I want to show you this restaurant. This is all seasons bistro and save for a few candles inside, which you can see in the back. It is completely dark. Now I was in here about an hour or so ago and I found an extra bin of ice on the ground and they got very excited. Take a look. It's cold. Yeah, yeah, Close it quick. Good, 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 good. If they seem a little panicked getting that ice into the freezer, it's because they've got about $10,000 worth of food for the restaurant inside, meat, fish, truffles, produce, you name it. The chef and the owner are hoping PG&E turns the power on by tomorrow morning. They think they can keep the freezer cool enough for about 8 to 10 hours until everything in the freezer spoils and they have to throw it all out. Is there anything you could have done to protect your inventory? No. I mean, not on, on that short of notice. Um, there's nothing we can do. We just have to cross our fingers. And we, I mean, everything's iced down, and we've got, you know, a generator is definitely in the works at this point. Um, I think everyone needs to have a generator. If this is a protocol, wonderful. But we need to, now we know what's going to happen. There's no estimate on when this outage will be restored. Right now, about 2,300 PG&E customers are affected. The wind, you can see, calm right now, but the gusts are coming and going. And I can tell you, it is warm out here. Hey folks, and welcome to another video from A Plain Truth. It was a very weird night here out in Santa Rosa, California, about an hour and a half north of San Francisco, as they're playing their end game. And I want to bring your attention to a couple, uh, The Economist here. The Economist magazine is owned by the Rothschilds. Uh, it's uh, one of the elite's uh, notifications, and they always play the games with putting the future uh, predictions and predictive programming on their covers. So back in 1998, we see here on the left, get ready for a world currency. They were saying the, the world currency was going to occur in October of 2018. And then we see the new cover of The Economist magazine, The World in 2019, and it's dark. What are they telling us, folks? Are we going dark? Vision 2020, I showed you on Vision 2020. Are they going to turn off the lights and then Vision 2020 is turning them back on? 2020 is hindsight, but looking ahead, that's the game going on here. And they're playing it out here in California as well by preemptively shutting off our power as soon as any type of predictive winds come up and they shut off the power, not just for a little while, but for a day or two at least, they say, because of the red flag warnings. Except there's no wind, folks. I'm looking out my window. I looked, I kept it out all night. There was no winds at all. Yet they're shutting off the power. They're saying there's huge gusts coming out of nowhere. But the power, the, the gusts have been reported as far as, far as Mount Ashland, uh, Grants Pass up in Oregon. They're saying they have winds, really weird winds going on up there. And then the Redding fires yesterday, the winds out of nowhere. And then all of a sudden they're saying there's gusts of winds are going on here. And then they're shutting off our power. There's no fire. There's no fire down here whatsoever, folks. They're preemptively shutting off power because they're blaming it on PG&E and they can't have the trees fall on the power lines and cause more fires. We caught up with a homeowner in Healdsburg. It's a high fire risk area and they could shut off the power in his area, which would be great to prevent fires, but it will also cut off communication. Fires. A down power line here is going to start a fire, so I'm totally behind it. I, I believe that, that it needs to be judicious. Patton is if we know that the power is being taken down to avoid the, the opportunity for a fire to catch, um, I'm, I'm going to be paying a lot of attention. PG&E says they're doing everything they can to notify people early. Chef Kathman and a visitor from out of state both told me they understand why PG&E cut the power and that the inconvenience is better than losing homes and lives. But both would have liked a little more warning that this outage might happen so they could have better prepared. So you can see from the video, they're prepping the customers to tell people that, hey, yeah, we agree to you cutting off our power. We think it's a good idea so fires don't start. 
What a bunch of bullshit. So pg and cuts power to 17,000 customers in Sonoma and Lacking, Lap, Napa and Lake Counties almost one year to the day after the fires started last year. Out of nowhere, no winds again, and all of a sudden <clears throat> the winds come up, manufactured, geoengineered. So they shut off the power to 17,000 customers, but they didn't notify anybody. And nobody had any pre-notification that the power was going to go up. But they said, we warned you with all the mailings, we're going to shut off your power. But <laughs> these winds come out of nowhere, and then they shut off everybody's power and say, hey, we told you. Unbelievable. And again, they're saying, oh, it's higher humid. It's at the low humidity and the high winds and the warm temperatures. You know, it's it's 78 degrees. It's a little bit warmer, but nothing enough to make make a, the winds create out of nowhere, especially from the north northeast. Absolutely absurd. And here they're saying another 70,000 PG&E customers in Sierra Foothills were set to lose power as well. Now they're <laughs> the power is set to be restored by Monday night, but some outages will be uh, not until Tuesday. They said. And again, here look at the the map here. Look at the weather for us for today. Uh, eight mile an hour winds out of the southeast. Eight mile an hour winds out of the west southwest. Do you see any winds coming out of the north northeast? They're lying to us. They're creating the weather and they're destroying. They're turning dark on us uh, so that we we we're losing power. They're taking away our power. They're requiring California. If you remember, everybody in new homes have to have solar panels because I have this theory that I've been pushing that all power is going to be coming from space, including your cars, wireless power to your battery cars, including your energy to your homes, and including the internet. It's all going to be from the space platforms that they're 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 going to be uh, they already have up there that they're going to be using to control all the energy from up above all right I want to recap and show you again how they're falsifying data and changing the whole story this is the report that came out 170 fires in October 2017 in the fire siege 170 fires in nine different counties okay and they're saying that it burned a, a total of 36,523 acres and that determined the fire started in two locations was caused by trees or parts falling into PG and power lines and then another article says Cal Fire's report puts the blame where it belongs squarely on PG&E confirming it was responsible for many of the fires that devastated lives many of the fires beyond the Tubbs fire which is here in Santa Rosa it's unclear how many reports remain for Cal Fire to complete oh really so this was from back, back uh, last March I believe and it says here Cal Fire released its findings Friday on 12 of the more than 170 fires last October 8th from the hot dry winds the agency's investigators found all but one were connected to PG&E electrical lines, power poles, or other equipment. In the lone case where pg &E was not cited, a power line was also the cause. So again, that leaves 158 out of 170 fires a year over a year later, and the experts in CAL FIRE and all these guys with all their degrees and fire forensics still have not determined 158 out of 170 fires that started last year but they're putting the sole blame on PG&E. Unbelievable. But see, this is the game they're playing. October 6, 2018, last week, CAL FIRES concluded PG&E power lines equipment sparked 16 of the 18 fires. What happened to the 170 fires, folks? See how they eliminate the whole story? They're just lying to us so they can shut off our power. And what does this allow them to do is put more surveillance over the people that live around here as they're expanding the watching camera networks flying drones around here all over the drones around here flying have been expanding and there used to be one and now there's three or four in the sky so they're using this as an excuse but why is pg and e being allowed to expand their network why wasn't pg and e allowed to go bankrupt why are we supporting pg and e and the legislature using the passing law that making the taxpayers have to fund the screw-ups by pg and e if they were the cause of it of only 12 of 13 of the 170 fires but again I want to make sure that we really emphasize they have not determined the balance of these fires and yet they're making all the decisions like they know what's going on unbelievable all right and then closing folks this is the new fire threat chart that's being brought out by Cal Fire basically <laughs> the entire California North California this California coast and the Sierra Nevada ranges are all extreme fire dangers even where there's a lot of cement a lot of uh, suburban urban areas they're calling them extreme fire dangers why because these are the areas they're planning on 
creating the wind, shutting off the power, burning us out, using lasers, whatever it takes, the scorched earth policy set the world on fire. So uh, to heads up, uh, one of the businesses you might want to get in to help people is get into the generator business because the generator sales are going to go through the roof. As the power gets being shut off, people are going to want their own independent sources of power. So self-generating energy, have, knowing you having your own food, knowing where your water comes from. It's really important to understand. Get a pickle barrel, 40-gallon pickle barrel, put water in it, get some dried food and whatnot so you can hang out for a while until they turn back on your power. But you don't want to be fleeing. You don't want to be leaving your home. You want to protect your assets, protect your family. It's your right to stay in your home, even if these mofos are shutting off the power on anybody, everybody for their own agenda. All right, plain truth out. We'll catch you next video. Love one another. Say a prayer.